I went to... Uh, it was an in-your-face kind of debate as the vice presidential candidate squared off. If you don't try to compare George Bush to Harry Truman, I won't compare you to Jack Kennedy. <laughs> Dan Quayle fired back. Did you my require turn. My, my turn. Like Did you require family? Lighten up, Al. My turn. It's a free discussion. Take a breath, Al. Inhale. It's a free discussion. And as for James Stockdale, well, he was a man of few words. I feel like I'm an observer at a ping pong game. <laughs> WLWT, Channel 5, Cincinnati's 24-hour news channel. This is News 5 with Jerry Springer, Norma Rashid, Pat Berry's weather, and Ray Horn with sports. Now, live from Crosley Square, this is News 5. Good evening. The first and only scheduled vice presidential debate was filled with fireworks from the beginning. Dan Quayle and Al Gore collided in a fierce finger-pointing confrontation. As for James Stockdale, he punctuated his outsider status as Ross Perot's running mate from the get-go. Who am I? Why am I here? <laughs> I'm not a politician. Everybody knows that. So don't expect me to use the language of the Washington Insider. But the two professional politicians acted more like bickering schoolyard adversaries while Admiral Stockdale stepped in with the occasional zinger. And the open format allowed Senator Al Gore and Vice President Dan Quayle to turn the discussion into a shouting match. That is why is Bill Clinton qualified to be President of the United States? You've talked about oh, Jim, you've talked about that. Jim Baker, you've talked about trickle-down uh, economics, you've talked about the worst about... economy in 50 years, you I'll haven't be happy told to us answer one those. reason why Bill Clinton is your qualified to be President of the United States. Yeah, I'll be happy to. I, I want to go back and make a point. Well, you've asked me a question. Let me, if if you don't answer, answer my question, I will answer, answer yours. Question. I've made a statement. The two also locked horns over the question of trust and truth in the presidency. And the leaders sit down and they will negotiate and they will come to agreements with people that they trust. And this is a fundamental problem with Bill Clinton, is trust and character. George Bush, in case you've forgotten, Dan, said, read my lips. <laughs> No new taxes. And the accusations were flying at a fast and furious pace as well when the subject turned to alleged political waffling on the issues, aimed at everyone from the president to both vice presidential nominees. But when it came right down to it, perhaps it was the least outspoken of the trio who summed up the tone of tonight's debate the best. And I think America is seeing right now the reason this re uh, nation is in gridlock. The second of the three presidential debates will be held Thursday night in Richmond, Virginia. I'll have some thoughts about tonight's showdown later on in commentary. We get other reaction to tonight's debate from some people who rarely get a chance to express their views publicly. They have just been added to the layoff list. News 5's John London watched the debate with them. The understudies at Georgia Tech University had quite an attentive audience some 450 miles away. The folks who crammed into Nancy Fetter's trailer along Elk River Road were listening with a new sense of urgency, the kind that smacks you squarely in the face when you lose your job. This is Ripley in Brown County, Indiana, a small slice of rural America, the kind of place that can ill afford layoffs in large numbers. How do you absorb it when you have only a few thousand people living here in the first place? Well, Ripley found out this week 400 jobs are being lost here at USU. What are we going to do now? You know, we're all, 60 days, we're going to be gone. You know, we're all of us here just like a family, and it's, it's, it's going to be sad. The last day of work is going to be, this will be unreal. Most of the onlookers here are convinced Clinton is the way to go. They are angered by the shifting of jobs to cheap, non-union, non-American labor. They have even, we learned two weeks ago, taken our tax dollars and subsidized the moving of U.S. factories. Three weeks before the election, the minds in this room are pretty well made up. The debates are not changing the views of some of the men who feel more secure with George Bush, nor with some of the women who believe the working poor will benefit from a Clinton administration. He's going to try to do something with this economy. He wants to put the American people back to work. Clinton looks new, too sneaky to me, and <laughs> I was thought, oh, he just got that sneaky look about him, and I was, you know, you can't trust somebody like that. As for the feisty exchanges between Vice President Quayle and Senator Gore, well, all the verbal blows over abortion and family values and the rest, 
didn't register much with some. You can hear this baloney all day long. This is not making a bit of sense to me. And eliminate the Two big kids fussing what they're doing. What, what do you think needs to be done in terms of economy, jobs, employment in country? Keep the jobs in the, in the country. Keep the jobs in the country. That's what it kept coming back to tonight in that crowded trailer out in Ripley. For them, it is the only issue of this election. You said a lot of their minds are probably already made up. Can they be changed in these next three weeks? Well, you know, I, I think the debates are reinforcing the opinions that they already have of the candidates, Norma. They'll probably watch the remaining two, but, uh, you know, I think they've decided how they're going to vote. Whether okay. they're going to vote for Clinton, Bush, or Perot, I think they've made up their minds now. Okay. Thanks a lot, John. Jerry? In other news tonight, the Cincinnati area is being hit by a sharp increase in a disease with a simple prevention. The Cincinnati Health Department is alarmed to learn that 29 cases of hepatitis A were reported last month alone. That's as many cases as reported in all of 1989. The virus has flu-like symptoms but is not life-threatening. It's spread through uh, fecal material. The good news is a simple procedure can stop the spread of hepatitis A. It's extremely important that the public be reminded that hand-washing and is the most effective means of preventing the spread of hepatitis A infections. The virus has been reported all over the city, but the greater concentration is in Lower Price Hill, Sedamsville, and Riverside. The health department will begin offering free gamma globulin shots in those areas on Thursday. You only need the shot if you're in close contact with an infected person. The fate of Michael Bias is now in the hands of a Hamilton County jury. Bias is the 20-year-old Hazard, Kentucky man accused of murdering 10-year-old Aaron Rains of Lower Price Hill. The jury will continue deliberations tomorrow after failing to reach a verdict today. If Bias is convicted, he could get the death penalty. In the Newport murder uh, trial of Gerald Kaufman, this woman, a newspaper deliverer, testified today that she saw Kaufman near the murder scene. Kaufman is charged with killing his estranged wife, Karen, by suffocating her with a garbage bag. The defense says Karen Kaufman was depressed and committed suicide. The Kaufman's oldest daughter, Mindy, testified against her father today. She told the jury that her mother did have some problems, but after her parents separated, things were fine with her mother. You know, it was really never a happy marriage, but I guess I just never thought it would come to that. But, you know, I you know, eventually then understood why it was happening and you know I could see how unhappy that mom was during that time. The defense is expected to call witnesses who will testify that Karen Kaufman often talked about suicide. The trial continues tomorrow. And still ahead on News 5 tonight, new concerns for women with breast implants. We'll have the details. Also, Sports Illustrated hits the stands tomorrow with a scathing article on red zone of Marge Schott. Greg has the story. And Marty Parrat takes us down by the riverside as the tall stacks start bringing in the crowds. Please stay with us. We have more cancer-qualified support staff. More board-certified cancer specialists. Two linear accelerators. And more cancer-fighting weapons than any other area hospital. We have cancer outnumbered. The Jewish Hospital Cancer Center. Surrounding you with the best. Guess how much Shoney's 24 shrimp dinner costs, and that includes potato and soup salad and fruit bar. Go on, make a guess. Quickly. Ah, you're way over! <laughs> That's what comes, and the answer is $4.99. Wednesday nights at Shoney's, two kids 12 and under can eat free with each adult meal purchase. So, who wants to take it? We, we promise we'll be good. When I was elected county commissioner two years ago, a lot of criminals were walking the streets because we didn't have enough jail space. Some people said a tax increase was the answer, but I said no. Instead, we're putting two prisoners in a cell. And then we put them to work on community projects like this. 
Sheriff Silese and I have found a better way to clean up our parks and highways. Higher taxes are not the answer. Steve Shabbat. Tough, tested, trusted. On November 3rd, let's elect Steve Shabbat. Hi, I'm Chuck Boozer. Mornings on Wink, 94.1 FM. And I'm Randy Douglas. Watch your mailbox for your free Money Checks mailer. You could win up to $10,000 in instant cash. You could win a Bahamas cruise with romantic nights, sun-filled days, and entertainment. You can increase your chances of winning by sending or faxing your free money bonus check to Wink. Check out the very special offers from the Shapely Outlet Mall and discover true factory outlet prices. Set all your radios to Wink, 94.1 FM for details and win with Wink. A California woman, the first ever to receive a liver transplant from a pig, is dead tonight. Doctors in Los Angeles made the historic transplant, hoping to keep 26-year-old Susan Fowler alive till a human liver could be found. Sadly, a liver donor was found last night, but before the new transplant could be made, Fowler died. Her condition was too critical to undergo the operation. New concerns tonight about breast implants, concerns that the implant may make it harder to detect cancerous tumors during mammography screenings. The Journal of the American Medical Association reports routine mammograms could miss certain lumps due to the implant and the scar tissue that forms. The doctors say women with implants are now at the age where more and more of them are getting mammograms and they should know the risks. According to the journal, the problem with mammograms is not a reason to have the implant removed, but women need to consider this factor when deciding on implants. Back here, those majestic boats from around the country are arriving at the riverfront tonight. By Friday, all 17 of those grand boats will be ready to entertain you. Tall Stacks 1992 doesn't officially begin until Thursday, but there are some fascinating things going on along the river. News 5's Marty Parade is live in Newport. Marty, how are things shaping up? I tell you, Jerry, things are starting to happen. The steamboats are coming and going. They tell me as many as 10,000 people came out today just to watch the preparations along the river. I tell you, most of them went home with a smile on their face. The tall stacks have been away for four years, and it's good to finally have them back. 17 of the big boats will be docked in Cincinnati by Friday. Many are here ahead of schedule. There's a great story behind each and every one, like the spirit of St. Louis. It looks like something out of the 1850s, but actually, it's a brand new boat making its first trip to Cincinnati. The crew wouldn't miss this event for the world. There's no other place in the world that has a riverfront like Cincinnati that, attract, that can attract this many boats uh, all in one location. It's just phenomenal. Many of the boats which have docked aren't quite ready for the show to begin. That isn't stopping sightseers from looking things over. Well, there's plenty for people to walk down and see uh, just the excitement of the boats coming in and coming, going out and getting their provisions and people walking around. It's, uh, it's really exciting. <laughs> Without a doubt, the biggest attention getter so far is the Mississippi Queen. It has the tallest stacks of all at our celebration. It is the world's largest steamboat. The people who work on board call it home. I enjoy it because you get to travel, you get to meet a lot of people. I've been with the company 11 years now. You love that river, huh? I love the river. The sights and sounds of the Mississippi Queen. We're going to be seeing a lot of that and hearing a lot of that in the days ahead. I tell you what, there's lots of things happening on the Kentucky side this time in Tall Stacks 92. They're building an old Army fort over here in Newport. It's going to be right out of the Civil War era. It should be pretty neat. And we'll tell you more about that later on. Reporting live from the Riverside, Marty Perak, News 5. Thanks, Marty. In case you can't make it to the beginning of the celebration, you can see it all here on your official Tall Stack station. Channel 5 will go live with the parade of the Tall Stacks beginning at 4 p.m. on Friday. And we hope you join us for all the fun. Question being, of course, what's the weather going to be the like? Weather gonna be well, like? I can tell you in the next five days, we're going to have the warmest weather we've had in quite some time, and certainly the coldest weather we've had in quite some time. I'll tell you when all that's going to be here. Just and uh, speaking of chili. Speaking yeah. of chili, mm -hmm. Sports Illustrated. The Reds and recent events are featured in this week's Sports Illustrated. The article is entitled Dog Days, and in it, the Reds president takes some vicious shots. We'll give you a preview coming up in sports. Please stay with us.
Since becoming Hamilton County Prosecutor, Joe Dieters has begun the first county environmental prosecution team in the state of Ohio. Dieters sought the first indictments against parents who refused to pay child support. Dieters has vigorously prosecuted violent criminals and has initiated a victim's assistance program. Joe Dieters knows that the best way for Hamilton County to keep and attract jobs is to make our streets safe. Strong, fair, new leadership. Joe Dieters for Hamilton County Prosecutor. You've never seen anything like it. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. It's a whole new kind of TV. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Jeb Stewart, the official dog of this television show. Expect the unexpected. I don't make anything up on this show. I don't have to. On the Rush Limbaugh Show. This show is going to the Museum of Broadcasting for archival purposes because it's going to be so good. Rush Limbaugh, following The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. In the commissioner race between John Dowlin and Pete Strauss, the choice is clear. John Dowlin will be a full-time commissioner. Pete Strauss is a part-time city councilman whose term has ended, and now he wants to be a part-time commissioner. Strauss is also a part-time bankruptcy attorney. His business experience is closing businesses. When businesses close, we lose jobs. John Dowlin knows how to build jobs with 38 years of experience at P&G. Vote for jobs. Vote for John Dowlin for county commissioner. Everyone's talking about Steinberg, because when you buy any item $1.99 or more, you get free round-trip airfare for two to Florida, $2.99 or more, the Bahamas, $3.99 or more, Hawaii. And now, due to customer requests, with the purchase of any item $9.99 or more, Steinberg's gives you free round-trip airfare for two to London, Paris, Madrid, or Rome. That's the guaranteed lowest prices on electronics and appliances, plus round-trip airfare for two free. Now, only at Steinberg's. News 5 Weather is brought to you by Steinberg's, where you can get free round-trip airfare for two to Hawaii, the Bahamas, or Florida. Details at the store. Question now is, uh, what's the weather going to be as we move into the uh, yep. tall set? One of everything, it looks like. Uh, there's no debating. We are going to have <laughs> definitely a lot of warm weather for the next several days, and very chilly weather for the weekend. Just don't point your finger at us and yell a lot. No, I'm just going to be here and just do my thing, OK? OK. I'm no ping pong matches here. Let me show you exactly what we look like today. Morning low is kind of chilly at 38 degrees and some light frost, especially north. Our high this afternoon got up to 65, but tomorrow we are going to be a full 10 degrees warmer than that. Pretty good night out there right now. We've got 50 degrees and 59% humidity. Winds from the south at 7 miles an hour. Our barometer is 29.97. Take a look at this satellite picture. A few clouds just to our north. You see them around Dayton and up through Toledo, up to Fort Wayne. We are fairly clear now. I'm going to call it partly cloudy overnight, but it looks like a southerly flow of air will keep us from getting too much colder. I'm going to call it 45. Live radar, let me show you what's going on right now. Showers taking place east of Dayton, almost to Columbus, around Springfield and up towards Fort Wayne. This is ahead of a warm front that's already just trying to move through the tri-state in the next couple hours. That warm front is going to give us 75 degree temperatures for tomorrow. Should be pretty good. Here's where everything is on the map. High pressure has been dominating our weather, actually scooting out this warm front moving through and the shower is just ahead of it. See what happens tomorrow. We'll be in this warm sector at 75 with a mix of clouds and sun. This cold front actually isn't going to move through. Everything's going to move to the northeast. So another nice day on Thursday with the chances of a couple of showers, maybe late tomorrow night, early Thursday. We'll be fairly close to this front, but it won't actually move through. It'll give us a few clouds, but we're on the warm side. I think Thursday, 78 degrees, and it could actually be 90. Warmest we've seen in quite some I mean, 78 degrees, actually 80. I didn't mean to scare you. The warmest we've seen in quite some time. Here's the cold front that's going to move through very quickly and trigger showers and the possibility of thunderstorms on Friday because of the big difference in the warm air on this side and the much chillier air on this side. Talking about 73 for Friday and then only 53 for a high on Saturday and only 47 degrees on Sunday. So it will clear out for the weekend, but the bitterest, coldest air we've seen in quite some time. Forecast for the travel weather looks like this. Sunshine on the west coast, but cooler. Windy again in Dallas and rain likely for Detroit. Our forecast looks like this overnight. It'll be partly cloudy and mild with a low temperature about 45 degrees. During the day tomorrow should be wonderful. A mix of clouds and sunshine. It'll be warm and windy with tomorrow's high 75. 
The five-day forecast really does tell the story. Over the next couple of days, a mix of clouds and sun. Friday, the transitional day with the front moving through, triggering showers and the possibility of some thunderstorms. Saturday and Sunday, we clear out. But the big story over the next five days is temperatures. 75 tomorrow, 78 on Thursday, may hit 80, 73 on Friday before the thunderstorms. And then we're talking about a big drop in temperature. Saturday, a morning low of 40 and a high just at 53. And it'll be very windy, so it'll feel even chillier than at 53. And then it looks like it could happen on late Saturday night, early Sunday morning. Our first freeze dropping down to 30 degrees and a high Sunday at 47. So some really chilly temperatures coming up. So the next two days be warm, unseasonably warm. Our highs only at 68 right now. And then on Friday, we'll have three or four hours of showers and storms. Then after that, the bottom falls out and really chilly. So, so if I got it right, we need short sleeves, a sweater, a raincoat, an umbrella, and a heavy coat. What you don't need is snowshoes. That's about it. Yep, everything, everything else, else you need. Pull out of the closet. Everything and, you own, you'll need at some point over the next five days. Uh, I think I'm going to have to pack to go down there. So yes, you are. That. In commentary tonight. Now the running mates have had their day. Certainly a more strident affair than Sunday night's debate. Will it sway the voters at all? <clears throat> the subject of Jerry's commentary. Jerry. Thanks, Norma. But for its entertainment value, providing political pundits something to talk about and comics something to joke about, vice presidential debates are as meaningless as the vice presidency. I know a president could die or become incapacitated or be otherwise chased from office, as has too often happened in our lifetime, and then the vice president would have to take over. But as we've noticed in past elections, particularly in the last one, Voters will laugh about the running mate, cheer him or ridicule him, but will hardly ever let the number two spot on the ticket dictate whether they'll vote for the number one spot, that is, how they'll vote for president. Surely no vice president in the modern era has been so universally panned as Dan Quayle, and so lowly held, according to the polls, in public esteem. And yet, it didn't stop George Bush from winning in a veritable landslide back in 1988. So unlike the presidential debates, where how the candidates come off is significant in swaying undecided voters, how Quayle, Gore, and Stockdale did tonight doesn't matter a hoot, other than it gave each of them a chance to blast away the head of the other guy's ticket. So Quayle could go after Clinton's character, Gore could lament the condition Bush has left America in, and Stockdale, well, he could simply echo Perot and say, plague on both your houses. We need a clean sweep in Washington. So go ahead, let's all argue over who won tonight, whether Quayle was better than expected, whether Gore was as good as predicted, and whether Stockdale did okay for a guy we never even heard of. But remember this, it doesn't matter. If you don't believe me, ask Lloyd Benston. Back in 88, he did great. For America's 500th birthday, Swallens is celebrating with great Columbus Day freebies. Buy selected home entertainment and major appliance items and get Swollen's gift certificates, Phoebe Riverboat certificates for two, or a Caribbean weekend cruise for two. RCA's home theater TV with surround sound and color picture in picture, just $9.99. Get those features with RCA's 35-inch home theater, just $16.99. Or choose this model with noise reduction and parental control for only $19.99. RCA's 52-inch projection TV has its own 10-watt stereo amplifier. Factory trained service and knowledgeable sales staff at Swallens, where the prices are always low. Swallens, where the customer is number one. We owe you a value. Halloween is the time to let your imagination have fun, and the fun always begins at Michael's. For wearables, you'll find the best selection of t-shirts, sweatshirts, and pants sets in adult, youth, and toddler sizes. Embellish with paints and Halloween appliques to create your own unique costumes and one-of-a-kind designs. And as a special Halloween treat, this week you can take advantage of savings on raglan sleeve sweatshirts. For the most fun this Halloween, there's no place like Michael's. <laughs> A bank has just so much money to loan. It can make big loans to the international traders, the global movers and shakers. Or if it's Bank One, it can stay a little closer to home and be ready with whatever it takes for the day when a local company sees a chance to double its business. Judge your future by the past. Trust the experience and proven record of 35 years of service to the law. Re-elect Judge Eugene Utz. 
you know what this was big news to us last week yeah. and now it's getting to be big news for the rest it's of the nation some national attention apparently tomorrow what you're saying in sports illustrated now already there's been new york times espn now tomorrow sports illustrated the reds may not be in the playoffs but recent events have made them national news sports illustrated hits the streets tomorrow and it may cause marge shot to hit the roof the article is entitled dog days it recounts lou Pinello's departure the firing of bob quinn it is tough stuff writer tim kirkjian says if Schott had treated Pinella and Quinn and any number of her front office employees, as well as she treats her dog, her baseball team wouldn't be in the deep you-know-what it is in now. Unidentified Reds players are quoted in the story. One says, the dog is a big, big negative. It's embarrassing for the players. They talk all the time about how angry they are about it. The fans laugh because they're embarrassed. It's like, how stupid can this get? The dog goes on the field every night, and the same guy has to scoop it up. People laugh at the guy. Shot does inhumane things to people. Another identified, unidentified player is quoted in the story saying, Marge just doesn't get it. Her only two concerns are her dog and money. We're hoping she buys the zoo and sells the team. Then everyone will be happy. Tough stuff. And there's more coming tomorrow in Sports Illustrated. <clears throat> Meanwhile, the Reds made three roster moves today. Tom Browning, Scott Service, and Mickey Brantley all added to the 40-man roster. Further indication that Director of Player Development Jim Bowden has the GM job and an announcement is forthcoming. Sports Illustrated on the stands tomorrow. And how about this? After being down three games to one in the National League playoffs, it appears the Pirates will push it to seven games. The Pirates turn the chop shop into a butcher shop tonight. The Bucks pounded Tom Glavin for eight runs in the second inning. Right now they're in the ninth inning. The Pirates are leading 13 to two. Game seven tomorrow night in Atlanta. Game six of the American League playoffs tomorrow afternoon in Toronto. Jays lead the A's three games to two. Elsewhere, college football, we got a record running right here under our nose. Coach Vic Clark's Thomas Moore Rebels are 5-0 this season. They've won 15 in a row. That's the longest winning streak in Division III. Raises the question, are these guys the best kept secret in town? We're 5-0, and that's uh, the first time you've been out here. So uh, <laughs> I'd say that, uh, that that's pretty conclusive proof from, from our vantage point. Uh, but we don't really dwell on that. Uh, I've always told the players that uh, if uh, you win, enough games eventually they have to drive across the river and uh, <laughs> so far that's true and we did get this the blue rebels have outscored opponents 164 to 86 saturday they play tennessee wesleyan at home george vogel will have more on thomas moore tomorrow in college basketball looks like the bearcats have lost out on a big one it appears they'll lose prep standout damon flint ohio state the star guard at woodward had made uc one of his finalists but he's called a press conference in the morning it's believed to make Ohio State his choice. The word we're getting is that Flint prefers Randy Ayers' coaching style. He apparently sees Ayers as a little more laid back and relaxed than Bob Huggins. In high school soccer tonight, Dick Arsman and his top-ranked Roger Bacon squad at Elder. Bacon goes to second half minus the player because of a red card penalty. Elder capitalizes. Jeff Cummings of Elder gets the goal off the header. Game tied at two. But with three minutes to go, Bacon's Sean Feldhaus comes through. Big play coming up. Drills one from the corner. Bacon wins it 3-2. They're number one in the city. Meanwhile, number two, Anderson keeps pace. They beat Northwest tonight 7-1. And in volleyball, Mercy takes Purcell Marion. Bobcats are 16-3. Looking very good, the Bobcats. Strong stuff from Sports Illustrated. Yeah, and it's not the kind of publicity you like to see, but I guess when you know. No, and a lot of people will say it's unfair, and they'll wonder why that a, a player would be willing to take Marge's money and criticize her in a format such as Sports Illustrated. But it's common in baseball. You and I were talking into the office.